In this video, I'm going to be trying to forge a dagger in under two hours. Now, I've done time-based competitions before, namely being forged in fire, as well as my Viking Sax build, which I did in under six hours. Now, this challenge in particular was a sort of trial run, as I'm going to be doing this up in New England during the New England School of Metalworks Bladesmithing Symposium. They have a challenge there called Battle of the Bladesmiths, and it's where four guys will try to forge a dagger in under two hours. Whoever makes the best dagger that also performs is the winner. Well, this is my practice run, and just watch how it goes. We have ourselves a timer here. Once I hit go, we have two hours to finish a complete dagger. All right, ready? And go. Oh boy. <laughs> Here's where I encountered my first problem of the day and the file actually split on me as I was forging it. This is due to me not kneeling it before I started forging, but to fix this I'm going to go ahead and cut off the part that's split, uh, grind off the flashing, and then reforge in my tip. Something I really regret doing in hindsight is I spent a lot of time consolidating the file down on itself. This is something that during the actual competition I need to make sure I don't do, as it ended up costing me a lot more time than I needed to forge the blade. So here you can see me pouring in my quench oil. This is a Parks 50 professional grade quench oil that has a high flash point. Now I'm going to be preheating it to get it up to the temperature of bath water using a piece of rebar that I heat up in the forge. 
Preheating the oil allows it to quench quicker and allows you to get a harder blade. I'm also annealing the blade three times before I go in for the quench. This is basically just getting the blade up to critical temperature, which is right around that cherry red color, and letting it cool down. This allows the grain to be nice and prepped, that way whenever you go in for quench, you don't get any significant warps and even cracking. Yeah, been super pumped though to, to learn how to do this, as well as do traditional... So I quenched it, the blade is hard. Flame tempering is great because it's fast and I've had a lot of really successful results with it. I'm going for about 400 degrees. Something you'll notice that I do differently here is I'm actually going to be grinding without any sort of glove on. I do this after temper as I'm going to be removing a lot of material and if I were to wear gloves I wouldn't be able to feel the heat of the blade very properly. Uh, that's a, a surefire way that you can actually ruin your temper when you're grinding, especially if you're doing you know, a heavy amount of stock removal. So I like to say as a rule of thumb to grind without gloves after heat treat so that if your hands are too hot, the blade's probably too hot. So keep that blade cool and uh, make sure you don't screw up your temper. So now that our guard's been forged, I had to figure out how to quickly get a hole for my tang to go through. And my first thought was to grab a file that I had laying around and try to use the tang of that to actually punch a slot down through it. This ended up kind of working, but I ended up running over to the drill press and drilling out the hole a little bit, as well as using a Dremel with a carbide end bit in order to widen that hole and get my tang to fit as quickly as I could. After the guard was fitting, I quickly grabbed a piece of walnut to try to rough out a handle in the last few minutes. This is where the time I really, really started to feel it pressing on my back. And yeah, just enjoy these last few minutes of me under, under pressure. <laughs>
Well, that's unfortunate. That is how far I got in two hours. I'm actually quite, um, quite, I don't really know how to feel because I should have been able to do this. I mean, my belt did not help, but I'm not going to blame the belt. I think it's just uh, poor time management all around. Yeah, my wife's shaking her head. That's, uh, that's one of my downfalls, but uh, no, I, I don't know. I'm happy with it. I'm happy with where we got. I'm happy with kind of how forging went, how clean everything kind of went. Um, I'm happy with the blade shape. Again, I've never done a dagger, especially not one this large. Um, I've done a lot of Japanese daggers, Tontos. So, yeah, well, that really sucks.